ook als je die zonnezadel van de politie zelf bent, is het niet per se iets dat zit zo bestuurd. En waar af? Bad Blood Podcast. Yeah, we're Paddy Maloney. Paddy, how are you? I'm fine, mate. I'm so good. On. Good. Much been going on during the lockdown, eh? Not a lot. Not a lot. No. It's safe for everyone really, isn't it? Yeah, it's a bad time, maybe. Right. But I'm going to get straight into this. Paddy Maloney, famously known as the Altar Boy. The Altar Boy, yeah. Right. You were a potential priest. How did, you, how did the drug dealer come into us? Oh, that was later on. <laughs> <laughs> that yeah. was later on. Yeah. That was. Yeah. Uh, well, everything's straight and legit now. Like, you're living life just, I, no worries at all, no connections yeah. to anything like that. How different is life now compared to what it used to be for you? It's obviously a lot more chilled. Yeah. There's no pressure, no sleepless nights. You know. I'm in a good place. Family's all grown up. Grandkids. Yeah. Yeah, good place, yeah. Good place. Yeah. Um, can we just take it back to the days of when you used to work on the door? When I used to work on the door, yeah. Uh, I even worked on many doors, to be quite truthful. Uh, I worked in the speakeasy. Man, I started the speakeasy as a glass collector, DJ, barman, and then I ended up on the door. Right. And that's where that's what led me to the doors. I worked on uh, a pub called The Trooper. One or two nightclubs down the town. Mainly the speakeasy, but it was uh, in them days you didn't need a license. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did have to wear dicky balls and all like that. So you just you just blended in. It was good. I enjoyed it. It was good. Yeah. How how tough was it? Uh, obviously working in nightclubs. Don't forget in them days nightclubs shut at two o'clock. Yeah. So like you, you were done just to buy two. Yeah, it was quite hard. It was it was hard. Yeah, because you you're gonna get chill. Mm -hmm. You just got to be like, gotta be patient. I wasn't a bad doorman, you get good doorman and bad doorman, you get bullies and lads who can talk, you know. Uh, I, I, wasn't a, I wasn't one of your, your top doorman type of thing, you know what I mean? Right, right. But I was respected, I think. Yeah, so yeah. I was respected, yeah. Was that obviously a team of yours? Yeah, yeah, there was a team I was on a speakeasy. It was me, Dave Bishop, Franny Remain, Tony Boyd. Couple more lads, yeah. yeah. We, we were good friends as well, so we all had each other back. So there was a good camaraderie yeah, yeah. there. Yeah, and like one of the lads, Dave Bishop. I mean, it was tough as a come. Yeah. So really, we never got much uh, problems with Cos and David. You know, so like, he was a he was a tough kid, yeah. So yeah. on the exception when there was trouble, how was it? Big kickoffs, or was it just genuinely like the people? drunk and drunk mm. people? Mainly women, yeah, mainly, you know, drunk and women. <laughs> yeah, it's drunk. I mean, it, the more people you put out was mainly women, women that were drunk. But when you did get a big kick off, I mean, we, we had the type of doorman that would uh, drag the floor and bolt them and stamp. We'd just get them out. Uh -huh. Get them out. And once they're out, they're out, that's it. You know. But I think we had a rule in speakers. If you got burned out with violence, you, 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 weren't, you weren't getting back in. Yeah, yeah. You know, like if you used to come and you just kick off and I say, this lad, just calm it down, just leave and you just yeah, come yeah. back in on fire. Yeah. And if you didn't, you'd all be back in on fire. Yeah, but so we have goals on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. right. There's a book. The Alta Boy, the book, Jamie Boyle. Yeah. Right, uh, uh, how does it feel to have your life written down on pages for everybody to read? It was a bit strange at first, because I've been writing this book for about 10 years on and off, uh, well before I met Jamie. And uh, when I come out of my last prison sentence, uh, Jamie was phoning me. I'd heard of Jamie, but I didn't know him. Uh, and he was asking me if I'd do an interview about Lee Duffy. Now, Lee Duffy, as you know, is notorious. I mean, yeah. the, the man was a machine. Uh, and I knew Lee quite well. So after a few conversations with, with uh, Jamie, I agreed to do it. Yeah, yeah. So I'd done a little speech for a documentary for him. And I mentioned to Jamie that I was writing a book. And he asked if we'd have a look at it. So I put some bits on, on paper. And he, he, he liked what he said. So it took me about, I don't know, four months. I'd write it down on in a notepad, and my wife would put it on a computer, and uh, God, we had some fights over it. Like, <laughs> yeah. I'm terrible. With, if you ask me times and dates, I'll probably get them wrong. Where my wife, she knows every time yeah, and yeah. date, and I'd be telling her a little story. She'd go, No, it didn't happen there. That happened first, and I'd be like, So we used to fight every night. But we got the end of it. It was all right. Yeah. 
Uh, I couldn't do it without Jamie. So he was, a, he was a great help. But when I, once the book was finished, and I read it myself, mm -hmm. I, I just broke my heart. Emotional. Yeah. 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 Very emotional. Yeah. But that, that's because it's my life. Yeah. So like you think, God, did I do that? Yeah. My mum and dad must have been tortured. Yeah, I, I can well imagine that, that it would bring up a lot of different memories. And oh, a lot yeah. of A lot of yeah. different emotions connected to mm -hmm. their memories. Uh, was, there, was there any time while you were writing this book, did you think, hold on, I'm not going to fucking put that in? Or, or, are you quite brutally honest with the book? I've been, I've been brutally honest with it. Yeah, I, I might have missed uh, things out about other people. Yeah, yeah. It's not, I, yeah, don't know, yeah. I don't know. Bring anybody yeah. down. It's, it's my life story, yeah. not theirs. You so, know what I mean. Yeah. So I've tried to. If someone's done something bad to me, I've tried to keep play it down. Or if I know something about someone, I, I haven't mentioned it. You know. Yeah. But uh, everything in the book is the truth. Uh, strictly, Paddy Maloney. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Strictly. I know you might not be proud of everything you've done in the book, but yeah. how proud of you of the book of the book? Yeah, it's it's uh, because it's so truthful. Yeah, I'm, I'm proud of it, yeah. So you should be as well, like, yeah. Yeah. To, to, put, to put your life on show for everyone to look at and read. Yeah, yeah. Ah, it's it's got, ah, there's going, there's going to be critics left. Oh, yeah, there's, yeah, going, there's, to there's going to be critics. And you can't fault them. Oh, yeah. Because don't forget, at the end of the day, I was a drug dealer. Yeah. And not everyone likes drug dealers. No, nah, nah, you know, they're not all good people. 99% bad, mm -hmm. and I was one of them. Yeah. yeah. That's just the fears, though, isn't it? Yeah. It is. Everybody goes through them. Yeah. Everybody. Yeah. See, the altar boy thing, I, I, I was brought up as a Catholic. That's where that comes from. And I was an altar boy. I practiced on my dad was uh, from Irish descent. And we had to go to church. We didn't have a choice. We had to go. But yeah, that's where the altar boy thing comes from. You know, I was never going to be a priest, you know what I mean? It was, it was just teachers talking about it and stuff like that. And I overheard it. So I started uh, dating girls then. <laughs> <laughs> you mentioned the women. <laughs> yeah, it's all about the women. It's all about the Me and Debbie, my wife, won't mind me saying, I've always been a bit of a ladies' man. <laughs> <laughs> but since Debbie, them, them things have changed. Oh, She's kept me right. She's kept me right, Debbie. Yeah. You were, obviously, you would have been in your prime when they was coming up, Lee Duffy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Lee Duffy was only a young kid. Only a young kid, but a big kid. Uh, he, he, he was like, he come on the scene, and in my opinion, is just overnight, he turned into a monster. Yeah. You know, from being a, a big young kid who was okay, and, and like, he, what he was doing, I think, I think he was watching all the other doormen, the doormen with big reputations, not the likes of me, but lads who yeah, ran yeah. businesses and yeah. ran security companies, and that. he was looking at them and thinking, you know, and I think that, it must have been the first time he's knocked someone out, and he was like, I, I've got power here. Yeah. And he just seemed to change overnight, and the change in him was unbelievable. That, I can't explain what sort of fear that, that he that he carried. The fear he carried was unbelievable, I can't explain it. But he, he could, he'd walk into a pub and you might have your back to the door, but you knew that there was something wrong. Yeah. Because he'd walk in on his own. The like, club would go silent oh, kind of thing. Yeah, 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 terrible. He, he, that's what, that was Lee Duffy, and that was his biggest uh, thing. He, nine times out of ten be on his own. Yeah. You mentioned, you mentioned about the fear that came around with him. I was just about to ask. Well, obviously, when you're playing when he was going up, when you first started hearing about Lee, did you know that he was going to be something big just from the start? Yeah, yeah. A little story, a funny story. I had a friend called Jeff Bailey. Uh, he's a Jamaican lad. Big, big kid. Really big kid, powerful. And we were the best in Matrix, we had. And me and him used to argue over Lee Duffy because... Uh, Jeff would say, no, he's not going to be, and I'd say, you watch that kid, he's going to be a monster. And six months later, mate, he was a monster. He was a monster. I mean, he had mid Middlesbrough, Middlesbrough on lockdown. You know, he just did, yeah, yeah, I got on well with him. I mean, so like, I'm not being so fast. I thought he was okay. Yeah. yeah. But he never gave me no grief, so. Yeah, you never, got, you never experienced that. So I'm not going to call him for it. Yeah, lots of other people, he gave grief to. And he, he had no fear, like, names didn't matter to him. Yeah. Didn't matter who you were, he was he was he wasn't scared. He'd come for you. He was Lee Duffy. Yeah. That's all I'm If you had a reputation, he was gonna take it off. Uh, you. He, he, he was just gonna meet you on your own turf. Yeah. That's the kind of person yeah. he was, wasn't yeah. it? What separates him from the other man? The fear he carried. The fear. 
Well, this kid, this kid would walk into a bar and, and like you see, if he was looking for Mr. Smith, and Mr. Smith was the seven people, he didn't care. He'd walk in with his shorts and his vest on, just point at you, want you, take you outside. The pub would go deathly quiet. Yeah. Everyone would be feeling sorry for you. Uh, I didn't you knew know, what was about to happen. Yeah, yeah, you're gonna, you're gonna get a good kick and he's gonna slap you. But that's Lee. That was Lee, and uh, he was only a kid when he died. He was only 26. No age to die. Like. No, no, uh, no age, no age. Yeah. I just yeah. wonder what he would have turned into if he had the chance. Oh, did that, I think that's a question on everybody's yeah. mind. How, how would he have been now? Would yeah. have been Duffy, yeah. 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 That's, that's the life he lived, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's. See, fear is horrible thing. Fear is a horrible thing. So if, if you're so scared of somebody, you don't know what your reactions yeah. are going to be. I, I, my personal experience, I, I probably couldn't live my life now that people are fearing us. I, yeah. I, I like being approachable, you know what I mean? Yeah, well, I do, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's a, like, you know, he's a nice person. Yeah, yeah. 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 But he's, he's, he had that nasty streak. Oh, he's terrible. Did uh, you ever witness the, any beatings that they give out? Yeah, quite a few, actually. But they weren't beatings. Because mm -hmm. they never got that far. No, more just quick far. digs. Just but once or twice outside the blues in Middlesbrough, once or twice outside the speakeasy, in the trouble. It was always all over, very quick. Over very quick. So I've never seen him kick anyone on the floor or anything. I think it was a bit like Mike Tyson, you know, that shrug of his shoulders when he gets in the ring. Yeah. When, when, when Lee's squared up, you know, you, you know you'd probably shoot yourself. Uh, uh, understandably. Yeah, you'd probably shoot yourself. So yeah. I think he had them beat before he even threw his left hook. Yeah. What's, what's your most poignant memory of Lee? Lee, outside the blows one night, a friend of mine, a Scottish kid, I forgot his name now. Uh, he was a big fit kid and uh, he, he wasn't uh, he wasn't easily scared but, like words had been said and he was coming out the blues and he was coming in and just a casual left open like straight over the wall laid out I had to go out and pick him up and wake him up wow he didn't even know what had happened what he didn't even know he'd been it Wow. Well, he didn't even stop. He just carried on and walked in the blues <laughs> he just never even stopped to <laughs> see like, like, what happened but his left open <laughs> and then he just carried on walk. Style. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's yeah, he had style, he had style about him. Yeah, he could fight. So he had lot he had built about lockdown. But what was the surrounding areas like? Did, did, did his name reach out fast? Yeah, or? it's it's that the spread. But you know like when Lee become really tough and, and like had Middlesbrough on lockdown stopped in Wrecker and then he, he branched out to Newcastle and that yeah. I was coming out of it then, you know what I mean? Right. I was coming out of it. I was starting to settle down with my wife. We had two kids. I'd done a couple of jail sentences, and you know, I I, I was getting out of it. How how? A silly question, but we've got to ask it. How was jail for you? Jail. Jail's a bad place. It's a bad place, especially if you've got a family. If you've got no one, I, I know worries, no concerns. I suppose it'd be a lot easier. But when you've got family, wife and kids, uh, it, it's it's hard. Take like leaving them behind, isn't it? It's hard, it's hard for them. So it, you know. I'm the sort of person that I, I worry about my family and I care about my family. So when I'm in jail, I'm not so bothered about myself because I'm in jail now. Yeah, yeah, it. yeah. It's phone calls home, it's visits and that, it's problems. Any any little problem when you're in jail is massive. It's massive. Like, because you can't get those. You can't do without it, yeah. 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 Demoralising. Yeah, it is, yeah. And yeah, we've had a couple of jail sentences. They weren't that big, you know, like 18 one, three, yeah. Mm -hmm. A couple of parcels and things. The Borsal was okay because I didn't have no, no ties, no family then. Mm -hmm. no. Just caused it throat, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, can't, I couldn't imagine being like having my freedom took off as whilst having a family. Yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. I, yeah. When, so when you least expect it, when you, I mean, all my other jail sentences I, I, I've been expecting because I know what I've done in this. My last jail sentence, like, it was like totally like wiped me out because I wasn't expecting it. Yeah. I wasn't expecting to be locked up. I, I'd finished with what I was doing. I, I was a drug dealer, uh, in in a way. I, I was uh, I was taking drugs off off a friend in Liverpool and giving them to a friend in Middlesbrough. I was just a middleman. Yeah, yeah. And uh, after about after about ten, seven, eight, ten months, and my wife didn't know all about it because it wasn't a great deal of money. Yeah, yeah. Right. I, I might be getting five hundred pound off him in Middlesbrough. Oh, so it wasn't once a month, so yeah. it wasn't a great deal so where I had to add the money because it was just paying bills and going on shopping, yeah. stuff like that. 
so she didn't she didn't know because we were running a social club at the time, so she didn't really know. And uh, I'd done it for about eight, seven, eight, ten months, and I packed it in. Yeah, yeah. I went to meet the lad, said to him, "It's done now. I'm not doing it no more." Mm-hmm. This kid whinging is not that clever. He's sending stuff back, and I said, "I'm not in. I'm not in the game no more. It's finished." And about seven months later, I'm just laid in bed and like my front door went with the oh, club door went in oh, straight through. Yeah, and dragged me out, and like I was like, "Wait, what's going on?" And uh, he asked me a few questions, searching the house for money and drugs, and then I realised. The other lads had already been locked up about seven months on the man, someone on the man, someone on Bill. Yeah. My, my name kept popping up in everyone's interviews and my phone number and things like that. So they're looking up for conspiracy. Oh. With conspiracy, I didn't realise how big it was. Yeah. I only knew two people. There was about 32 people involved in conspiracy. Oh, wow. That was from like England, Wales, Scotland, Cumbria, wow. every, all over the country. Yeah. But I didn't know them people. Yeah, right. and they were, they were major drug dealers. I considered myself as a middleman. Ah, uh, a runner. If yeah, just them. just doing a lot. Of, I was just doing a lot of favour. Just doing him a favour. You only class yourself as a middleman. Yeah. Had you had any sketchy moments, like real sketchy moments, whilst doing a transaction, like a, a deal or anything like that? Oh yeah, me early years. This this is my last jail sentence. I've yeah. spoke spoke about there. But you know, when I was on the door, that you, you, you know, you'd have access. I got access to drugs, and like I was watching people sell drugs and that. So I started selling drugs on the doors, yeah. mainly to my friends. And it was only marijuana, uh, and a bit of whiz sometimes. But I, I started off small, doing five pound deals, yes. ten pound deals, and like, so you slowly get bigger and bigger. And I started going to ounces, then nine bars, and kilos, and. Uh, Never had many problems at that. It was when I moved up the ladder a little bit and started like uh, working with a lad who imported drugs. Right, you know. right. Yeah, I had a friend called John McCormick. Uh, he was murdered in Denmark. He got shot and died. We were good friends. He was a massive uh, marijuana dealer in Spain. He lived in Spain. And he used to send it home for me. And uh, I would probably end up with two, three hundred K of him. Maybe every month. And that's when the problems, that's when the pressure comes in. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Pick out a big risk. It's a lot, it, you know, once it, once it lands out, it's, it's my responsibility. Yeah, I, it's your name's on it. Yeah, yeah. So, but the, the, Then were like bad times, yeah. I had good times, don't get me wrong. But there was some, there was lots of worry in it. I mean, obviously stuff goes missing sometimes and you've got to put in for it and that. But it, it was the life I chose, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, it was yeah. the life I chose. And, uh, not the best light that shows, but it's it's the one it's the path I went. Yes, I know it's wrong. I know now it's wrong. Yeah. But at the time you don't realise. You know, when I started off small being a drug dealer, I didn't realise where it was going to take me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And when it did take me there, it's it's hard to stop. Because people have people have uh, took it into the confidence and told you things and you know lots of things about yeah. lots of people. Yeah. So you can't just walk away. Right. I suppose yeah. you can, but like I don't, I don't know. Yeah, be repercussions because you have to be replaced. I, I, I need to be replaced. So whatever I'm doing for them, yeah. you have to replace me. And people's got to make sure that your mouth stays shut. Yeah, yeah, of course, yeah, yeah. Because it wasn't like just you know, it, it, they were important a lot of drugs, and it wasn't just my friend Johnny. He had partners and who didn't know me. Yeah. You know. So I'm not saying I couldn't get out of it because I could have, but at the time I didn't choose to. Yeah. And uh, sometimes, sometimes I wish I did. But one of the transactions, what you said, was a bad one. Uh, I'd uh, some gear had gone missing, about thirty k gone missing, and uh, it wasn't really my problem because the uh, when I was in Spain, I was talking about uh, Irish Brian and John McCormick, and I think I had three hundred k on me. I had thirty left. I couldn't sell it. Yeah. So I said, we just added on the next one. I'm not running about Middlesbrough yeah, yeah. trying to sell it. Mm-hmm. Put my name about because I had, I had regular customers. I didn't have to advertise it. Yeah. But they needed the money because they were buying a boat or something. So I had a pal sat there on the next table and he went, jumped in. I can do that for you when I get home. <laughs> so they said, yeah. Uh-huh. So I'd given it. He lost it. Oh. So now, but now they, they wanted me to pay for it. Yeah. And I went, no, no, I'm not paying for it. No. So we fell out over it, me and John. We've been friends for years. Irish Brian, I didn't like him. We weren't friends. So we fell out over it. And uh, cut long story short, 
he come to kill me. He come to England to kill me, and uh, in, in his pal. And it, it never happened, obviously, because I'm yeah. standing here. But uh, it was a scary time. My family had to move out, had to move away. And they also couldn't kill the lad who'd, who'd lost the yeah. baby. It was f pretty fucking serious. Then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, before you knew it, I mean, I, I didn't phone the police, but the police already knew. Obviously, because it must have been talk of the town. Yeah. And they were at my house. They stopped me every time I went out uh, to see if we were carrying anything. Because I wasn't, I wasn't physically scared of Irish Brian. Mm. I mean, if he was sat there, no, I wouldn't be scared of him. But when someone's threatening to kill your family, that, that, that's the fear. It, no, yeah. uh, it's your family. You can't yeah. take no that, that was the worst scenario I've ever had. Did you ever, ever think it would get to a point where your family was going to be threatened or brought into it? That, that, that time, Not yeah. That My family had to move away to Arrogate. They were to stay in Arrogate. How long was this over a period of? About ten days. Yeah. So I'm uh, pretty full on them. Yeah. When yeah. something like that happens, is it? What's the time? Is it people want you doing quick, or yeah. is there a time scale? They get watched, then it's the hit. Or yeah. What he what he done? He he come over and he turned around my house, threatened even to go out the window. My wife was seeing him and there. Uh, but like I say, I wasn't scared of him, so I, I mm -hmm. went looking for him because I knew his car. Yeah, yeah. I went on all the hotels and that. And I've never been somewhere, I'm, I'm, no, I'm not a gangster who has guns and stuff like that. You know. But a, a friend who, who was worried about me gave me a gun. The first time in my life I'd ever had a gun. And uh, for about six, seven days, I had, I had a gun in my pocket, you know what I mean? The, I, I know a lot of people find security behind guns and stuff like that. How did you feel about that? Having, having I was like petrified it. of it. Petrified. I was even holding it, I was scared to hold it because I mean I didn't, I've never had a gun in, before in my case life. It just yeah, in case it went off and stuff like that. I was, I was scared of the gun. Yeah. So in the end, I, I hid the gun, and uh, when when me and my friend Paul were driving about, uh, the back in this ten days on seven, several occasions, we'd have been stopped by uh, what do you call them, the armed police. Mm -hmm. yeah. And our cars would be searched, and he would tell us they were from Leeds. He would tell us uh, if you catch a car or anything, if you pull a gun out or anything, we're going to shoot you. Yeah. So we, we will shoot you. Yeah. Simple as that. He went so just don't be idiots. Yeah. Let the other fellow do it, and we'll shoot him. It made sense to me. Like. Oh, ah, that. But it never happened. Like good sense. Yeah. <laughs> it never happened. Thank the Lord. He died. He died in Mias at Air East Brian. They found him uh, shot in Mias in Spain. Shot in a shot. Put in a can of gas, and set on fire. Oh, oh, not a very so, nice way. Well, yeah. he wasn't supposed to get found, was he? No, no, yeah. That's but then were the scary parts, you know. That's very heavy. Yeah, heavy. yeah. Heavy to, to people yeah. like us. <laughs> it's, it was heavy to me. It's heavy to me. It was petrifying. So moving on from that, uh, the. Are you training or anything now? Do you keep fit or anything? Yeah, like I, that? I try to train as much as I can. Yeah. Uh, I've, I've always done gym, I've always done a bit of gym, yeah. But as you get older, you get, to, you get yeah. You know, I get a bit chunky and you can't lose it. <laughs> so a chunk, man, it's yeah. just power, relaxed but I, but power. But I like to, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's hard now because of the lockdown, isn't it, the train, but yeah. uh, I have a little bar in my, back, in my back garden and I just do a bit every morning, a bit every night. It's all you need, that's yeah. the style, that's yeah. pretty much what you want for that. Ah, is it? Right, Paddy, that uh, pretty much wraps the majority of things up that yeah. I want to speak to you about today. Um, Thank you for coming on. It's yeah. been an absolute pleasure to have you yeah. on. It's we've got to do it sometime. Hi, part yeah, two, definitely. definitely. It's new experience hearing these different stories, and it, yeah. it, it's good to get a point of view from the man in the moment. Yeah. Like it just gives other people a general idea of what goes on and like what kind of feelings are involved at that moment in time. Yeah. Uh, for me, it's quite heavy. Put a heavy hearing about stuff like that, but I'm glad I do. I, I'm glad I hear about the stuff that other people yeah. get up to, you know what I mean? Got to, yeah. got but uh, th I, thanks yeah. thanks for coming, thanks for uh, sharing your story with us as well. Yeah, really Absolutely fantastic. Uh, if there's anything out, I mean, it's in the book. Yeah, yeah. The book, buy the book, book. Really buy the book, the other oh, boy. boy. By Jamie Boyle. Fantastic so far. I'm three quarters of the way there's through lots it. Lots more stories in it. Yeah. Right. It's, it's um, all like bravado. Yeah. yeah. It's my life story, it's about my family. Aye, it's. it's it's Paddy Maloney in it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yep. Bad Blood Post, uh, Bad Blood Podcast. That's Paddy Maloney. Big shout out to Spartan Pit Fighters. Uh, we've got shows on coming up. That all oh, just lads just getting in, ripping each other a bit. Big up to them lads. That's it.